What do I normally do for these? <laughs> What's up, YouTube? It's Martin Easton East here, and it's time for an FF at $20 replay review. We got Sona support being submitted. Let's check it out. Let's see what it looks like. One moment. All right, let's see what this looks like here. Update on the, the Twitch chat situation. I think what I'm going to do soon, soon TM, is I think that uh, I'm going to do Twitch chat for subscribers only when I record these and then take it off subscriber only mode. Uh, so that way we don't get people getting flamed and shit like that. And any discussions that we have, we can keep it relatively civil. Uh, invades ass. This is one of the few times that I would say don't invade. Um, unless Shen, unless Shen wants to lead with like a taunt, don't. When you leave base and you don't plan to invade, uh, make sure you buy quicker than what you did and get in position, uh, to try rush a little faster or drop a ward there. Uh, don't, don't allow anyone to get invaded if you can avoid it. Uh, this holds true. If you see me play top lane often, I'll run out here early. Uh, mid lane, I'll run out here. Jungle, I'll run out here. You really want that vision if you're not invading. Especially versus Thresh. If you can get in that, it's a good habit. It's it's really good. It only takes one good invade from the other team, and then the whole game could be a shit show just because of that first blood lead. Alright, so you guys aren't starting golems. That's fine if he doesn't want to start golems. Help him push. First, first criticism I've had of you. Help him push the lane. Hit the minions and push that shit. Um, don't last hit it. Try to target minions that he's not autoing. Get them low enough for him. And then just stop. He'll he'll pick up on it if, even if he misses a couple. But we want level 2 before they get level 2. And you see right here. This is what I don't like. Uh, I don't like being on the defensive in this matchup at all. I would much rather you guys be poking the fuck out of these dudes because they have no sustain. So I think that um, right at the start of this replay, I don't like how we played this. I think that we need to be pushing, especially considering we were in lane first. Uh, pushing is a lot easier. Remember in solo queue for ADCs when you are allowed to push and this is just another game. It was the Draven fiddle the other day. Uh, this is just another game where early ganks aren't happening very often. Um, and being shoved under tower and trying to last hit is way harder than pushing and last hitting. So normally, if you push with your ADC, not only do you have a level 2 cheese, but your ADC is pretty much always going to get ahead in CS. And this is, remember, all my coaching vids and everything are for solo queue, so team play's a little different. Thank you for the $20! I'll get that video, I'll, I'll get that replay reviewed right after this, brother. So now we're kind of on the back foot. I don't like this. I don't like that we're on the back foot. Um, you know, you guys haven't warded yet, but there's not much to ward for. Zach's looking for it. You told on yourself, though, and I don't like that. Uh, he's not in range, just a uh, little notes about Zach. He's not in range to jump on anyone yet. His pathing is horrendous. And, um, by you walking at them, you're basically telegraphing the gank from a mile away. Now, if he had walked here and set up here in the brush, I wouldn't mind you walking, walking forward. But since he has absolutely no follow up from this position, I don't like it. I don't like that you guys move forward. You don't e don't even move forward if he wants to do that. You just stay behind Lucian. Don't tell. Uh, a lot of this game is just mind games. Not I. I'm gonna assume this is like silver range, silver gold range gameplay. Um. Most replays are unless specifically stated. Uh, even though these guys are gonna fall for telegraph ganks all the time. Uh, you get more out of it if you let positionally these guys have a chance to push up. Another move you can do when the gank's coming is you can just float in a position and just act like you're AFK and get hooked and then you force a 2v3. It's literally that easy in low elo. You literally would just stand there, get hooked, you know. If it gets close, you exhaust Jin and you let Zach just jump over the wall and, and get a fight going. 
anything's better than just walking at them. Now, of course, if you do the little AFK trick and Fiddle shows up, well, you're fucked. <laughs> you know, and normally it's not going to happen that way. Normally, you, you, you get like this is getting hooked here is horrible. Uh, you want to get hooked like here. See, now there's not going to be much in the way of follow up. See? All you're doing by getting hooked there is just uh, taking damage, basically. Looks like Thresh tanks some damage too. This is why I wanted you pushing because he doesn't really have much sustain. Poking and messing with him under tower is a lot better than uh, passively farming, like staying on the back foot. Notice Jin's ahead in farm because they've been pushing the majority of the early game. That's how it always is. It's so much easier to just push and farm than it is to just sit back and farm. Fact of life. Uh, it looks like you're being pretty passive with the poke. Uh, not really sure why. I understand not wanting to get hooked, surely. Um, but when you had this many minions, I would have liked to see more harass here. Autos, uh, empowered fucking Qs or whatever the hell it is. I want to see more poke out of you because you have full mana, you have full HP. There's really no... You don't get 100 and owed ever. You have, well, you did use exhaust. I didn't see the exhaust. Uh, you must have used it here when you got hooked. But that was only, the, the only reason why that getting hooked is bad there is just because of the space. You didn't utilize all the space. Um, but I would have liked to see more poke. Like, I know you're scared of him, but he doesn't, they don't really 100 and owe you. I mean, if you get, if you get flat hooked uh, in like, in minions pushing towards them, you're normally not just gonna die straight up. It's when that they're pushing towards you. So here you get hooked. This is this is what I wanted originally. I wanted you to do that, and I don't know if you did it on purpose. Uh, if you did do it on purpose, this is really good. If you're just kind of willy nilly, and then Zach is here, and you're like, oh cool, then that's bad. So if your awareness was good and you knew what you were doing, that's great. And you you know only you can really be the judge of that. But see how much poke you're getting done here with minions pushing towards them? Even though Zack didn't really hit a big knockup or anything, you guys do a fuckload, just a fuckload of damage. Okay? Um, that's why I really want you pressing up. And now notice, you're sitting back. Why? Minions pushing to them? Step in and auto this guy. Thresh has no mana. You're not putting enough pressure on. Auto him, auto him, push him back into tower here. Uh, and and uh, encourage Lucian to help you. You also see fiddle mid, which means I would literally a move to here. I I would literally march and stand right here. This point, this spot. I would stand here. I would literally just walk and then stop move and just press my buttons at them. Okay. Um that this is like you need to zone and this is space. They can't be here. It's like uh, the John Cena, like, you can't see me. They can't be here. You gotta get them out of here, dude. Get, get, get them the fuck back. So, next time they're low and out of mana and you're in the spot, you got full mana and everything, fucking punish this. Stand right here, right outside of tower aggro, and just poke. Press your buttons. Mash your keys. Plain Sona. Cockiness here. You have a huge lead. You need to take advantage of it. There's absolutely nothing that's going to kill you here. One. Press your buttons! The buttons! One, two, three. Uh, what the fuck? Get in there. Now, I don't like this. Same thing. You're missing poke. You're missing opportunity to poke. This is all time where they're going to go for farm and you should be harassing them. You and Lucian are fucked up there. I think you both should be in their butt cheeks with wedged between the cheeks like uh, like when you got when you got one of them really nasty poops and you wipe and there's just there's toilet paper still in between the cheeks just right wedged up in there deep deep in the cheeks this is no this is like they're not gonna do anything to you they're busy farming you got a wave coming you have plenty of time just if you're going to do this, though, the only thing I would cost you, I don't want you to be mindless. If you're, uh, when you push up, you obviously you can't just get flay hooked into the turret, but I do want you in the cheeks. 
deep in the cheeks. You know? Wow. Like a nasty, like a nasty, poopy toilet paper clump just in the cheeks. Hope to <laughs> I hope YouTube doesn't, uh, okay, no mana. Uh, still, you're not, yeah, you're definitely not harassing enough here. But we've already harped on this enough. Uh, Sona kind of, and, and another thing, Sona kind of falls into the, like, one-dimensional champ. Uh, which is why she isn't played a lot in the pro scene very often. Because she's very, very, very one-dimensional. You know what she's going to do. But the way to play Sona well, and Sona is really good right now, I think. I think she's pretty solid um, in, in terms of, like, solo queue. You need to utilize, like, your patterns, like, your trading patterns constantly. Full mana, full HP, why aren't we trading? Just, it's the only thing that we got going for us is Sona. We bully lanes, we poke people, we bully lanes, we poke people. That's what we do. We've had about, I would say, three minutes now where it hasn't felt like you've wanted to auto attack or poke. You're working off of ganks, which I like to see. He used his, or he didn't use his E cancel. I don't know what the cooldown is if he cancels it, but. Uh, same thing as before, I would be trying to get hooked. See, now you're poking, but. See, if I was playing against you, I would be like, wow, this guy has not hit me when he should have. So that means that a gank's coming. Um, part of playing a lane well is that your patterns don't change much from whether or not a gank's coming. Uh, you can play very, like, face up. Like a poker. You could, you could, you could polarize yourself for speaking, like, poker terms. Like, you could, you could be that guy that just sits at his turret, and then whenever ganks come in, you can, you know, let's, let's use Sona, for example. You could just sit back, never poke, and then when a gank's coming, and poke. Then everyone knows that when a gank's coming, you're going to step up. And trust me, even though it's low elo, some people, some people will see you playing aggressive as, like, that cockiness. That random moment of big dick where you just start going ham for some reason. Uh, and that's always going to be interpreted as a gank if you've never played aggressive at all. So now, um, Lucian goes a little crazy. This is a 3v3, and, and I think you know, uh, or you should, and now I definitely think you know. Yeah, LeBlanc shows. Lucian's playing over the minions, and he's going in. All I would really be trying to do at this point is poke Jin move down, and prepare to move out. LeBlanc's only level 5, so you don't have to play too scared. Um, if she's level 6, I'd probably just piece him, to be honest. Uh, I'll probably just see if he space... If he if he goes straight for Lucian, then you can move up, but if he's level 6, uh, and you don't know what he has, like if you don't know what he has Ignite, you don't know what, what he's working with, I would probably back away, because level 6 LeBlanc mid versus level 4 Sona with that exhaust... Uh, is pretty free low for him. So, in the 3v3, I would try to, I would hope Lucian gets this and backs down, and then assist him if he comes this way. If Lucian gets the kill and the, just kind of suicides deep here, if he stays in this region after getting the Thresh kill, uh, I would not push forward, and then I would just back up and, and just kind of reset this whole thing. Vagar is still mid, and to our knowledge, we don't know where Fiddle is yet. So this is how this is how the 3v3 should look. And for anybody watching this, this is how you should approach any skirmish. You should really be counting heads. You should really be trying to predict in advance what's going to be happening. So we know that Thresh is likely going to die. We know that LeBlanc and Jin are likely going to go for Lucian after Thresh dies. You need to play like it's like speed chess. Thresh is dead. Check him off. Lucian's gonna be behind a million minions without flash, so he is pretty, or maybe he has flash, yeah, he has flash still, I can't tell, I thought he flashed forward, but maybe I'm wrong, um, yeah, he just flashed, so we know that Lucian's gonna be targeted, and it's a matter of trying to help him, while at the same time not just throwing ourselves away, uh, that's what we're gonna be doing, so you back up way too far, you should move moving here, which we've already talked about, now, Zack is going to engage over the wall, or over the minions. Um, you can throw some heals and maybe some poke, but I would still be very, very cautious because we have no idea where Fiddle is. I will turn on the Fog of War, 
Fiddle is... Fiddle is up here. So thankfully you're safe, but you can't know that yet. But this is good. You're throwing poke. Now Shen's in this. Uh, unfortunately though, Shen is in this, but Lucian had, I think, flashed out. So that means that now you have a 4v2, but Shen's not going to land any taunt. So I would immediately go into push and reset mode because you're probably not going to be diving or anything at this level this is way early you're never going to get the tower down you're probably never going to get any of these guys unless shen hits a flash taunt onto Jin. so yeah you land some poke whatever you guys push the lane and then i would look to reset oh shit yeah okay that was that was brutal. So this is why I was saying, um, that was actually pretty well played by that guy. This is why I was saying the spacing of, Le like, against LeBlanc is pretty important. And that, you know, that's not your fault or whatever, but that was a pretty good pick off by that guy. Pretty good pick off. They're overstaying a little bit on bottom, but there's not much you can do about it right now. No one's gonna help you. Vager's pushing mid. That is that is uh the good thing here. They overstay. Vager deals two thirds damage to the outer, which is like which is like super good. Because there, there's not much going on in bot lane right now. It was pretty even trade for the most part, all things considered. But I think Vega actually makes it worth because he pushed the whole time. So that's what I like to see from my mids. Unfortunately, he's not farming very well, but you know, at least he's hitting the tower. You are getting Sight Stone, I presume. I would go for Sight Stone before finishing. I don't know how much gold you had when you backed, uh, but I'm pretty much always finishing Sight Stone first as Sona. So I would do that in the future. Uh, very important versus Fiddle because... Um, if you don't have vision of him, and I would definitely battle for vi if you guys were pushing, I would definitely be battling for vision of this. If, if I had flash, I would try to wiggle in here and get this down because you're going to need to know because any good fiddle player is going to be jumping that wall. And you got to think of that in advance and most support in general, unless you're fed, you want to be going sight zone like right away, just right away, get it out of the way, get the extra health, get the extra vision down and, uh, you know, Take initiative on that. Shut the fuck up, York. This patch is annoying. Shit doesn't load. York's talking shit in the background. Alright. So here comes the gank. We're gonna see... Um, I think that... I First off, I think that we could have had... Uh, we could have dropped a quick ward here after we pinked try. We could have just dropped one here. And like I was saying... Um, Fiddle will start looking bottom at 6, and the way that you tell that it's coming, just look at your jungle. He's 5, that means dude's probably near 6, or already 6, or you know, whatever. And then you can you can make a quicker assessment, you know, I haven't seen Fiddle in a while. So he's probably 6, and he's probably rushing it. Most, most like Nocturne, Vi, Fiddle, uh, Sejuani, all those are going to pretty much power to 6, unless they have like really obvious ganks that they can do. Uh, so if we had had this down a little quicker, or if I didn't see and you put this down and then they cleared it, um, I would be playing back uh, just until I see Fiddle somewhere. Uh, I would be sitting back for a little while and just waiting, like, wait till he ults mid, wait till he goes somewhere else, and then you can up your aggression. So, all you can really do, uh, I think you probably exhausted the wrong target there, and I also think that you got a little too close. Uh, it's just a mechanical error. You are not, in situations like this, uh, the best way I can describe it is, let me show you. This fight is shit for you, and you should know it as shit. It is absolute shit. All we are trying to do in this fight is we are just trying to get out and keep as much of our HP, man, or not our mana, our HP, our summoners, and so on as possible. That's all we're trying to do. Fiddle just burned flash, so he made a big, big commitment here. 
And all we're trying to do is get as much out of this as we can. So when you see this happen, you are positioned correctly, and then you kind of float on this. Uh, you guys aren't going to burst this dude, and, you know, you got a Thresh follow-up on the CC. So this is an ugly spot for Lucian, and there's, at, there's very little you can do to save him. Uh, you exhaust the Fiddle, but Fiddle isn't really going to be dealing much damage after his ultimate. The real concern is this guy. You can't really get to him safely, so all I would be trying to do is heal, deal some damage as I disengage out. That's all you can really do, and next time, beat yourself up over this. Next time, you should be like, man, I should be trying to get some something down in River because I know that this level 6 shit is coming. Okay? Um, and you know, if you, if you had a hunch it was coming, if you had a hunch it was coming and you ping him back and he dies to it, whatever, whatever, that's part of the game. You need to, you know, you need to do everything. At least you didn't die there. Uh, you get pushed out. It's good you're backing. I don't know if it's safe to stay. Now, uh, you might not get dove. Honestly, I would die to you. 100%. 100% dive. Oh god, what are you doing? This is- this is bad by you. Yeah, you're dead. Alright, let's back up to where you could tell doing anything here is gonna be bad. Um, you- you're only- the only greedy play that you can make, uh, is sitting here and getting this farm and getting the XP for it. Everything else is just suicide. And honestly, I would sit in the bush for a second and see where these guys go before trying to get this farm. Because I'm telling you right now, if I am Jin and Thresh, if you go to this turret and try to farm it, <clears throat> if you go to this turret and try to farm it and I'm Jin, I'm immediately ulting you. Like, I'm not even hesitating. I'll, I, as soon as I see you anywhere near the turret, I'm gonna ult you. So, m the greedy move is to get farm. You did the crazy Mongo move. <laughs> and you decided to just follow them around. Uh, not- not good. Not good. So this is what you should have been trying to do. But, uh, yeah. So this is all XP that you could have gotten. And you need your flash for a flash hole. Still no sight stone. And, oh yeah, this does kind of go back to the fact that, uh, <coughs> sorry, I'm, I've got something in my throat. <clears throat> because you didn't get Sightstone first, I think this happened. Um, I, the only time that I'll tell you not to get a Sightstone is when you are absolutely shitting on people and you want to get damage and you want to carry the game as a support, but you're not, you're playing traditional support. So get the Sightstone first and you guys won't get cheesed by the, uh, the fiddle. And one thing. Even though you know that Fiddle's coming, unfortunately, playing support, a lot of the, the role is about informing your teammates and taking care of your stupid teammates, which is why I don't really mind the Sona pick. Sona, Janna, Soraka, uh, all of them are pretty decent when you realize that they're pretty much designed to keep your idiot teammate afloat. Um, but if you don't have this vision down... Uh, a lot of times you'll see, for example, a lot of times you'll see me play top lane without wards and, and just the guy, you know, the guy plays a offensive at me and I'll just be like, yeah, I'm getting ganked and I'll just back down preemptively and sure enough, he'll like pop out of the brush, right? Well, here's the thing is that even though I may know that the gank is coming because I don't have the vision, just like in bot lane, because we don't have the vision, our team doesn't know. Our team doesn't know that it's about to happen. Our team doesn't have that information. Our team may not have the game sense. If you have that vision or I have that vision, that means the jungler can rotate in advance. He could set up for a counter gank. If there's if there's vision, they step over vision. It's not just you're protecting yourself from the fucking ganks. You are also informing your team of shit so that they can play back at it. If Zach's here and you have the vision here of Fiddle coming... Um, I'm not saying that's what happened. I don't even remember what happened. Uh, but like, if he, if, if they know that it's about to happen, then, you know, Zach can just show up and be like, I'm here. So when the gank shows up, he just counter ganks. It's fucking free low. So, uh, yeah, that's something to think about. Uh, 
Uh, you're playing pretty scared now, but I think that's acceptable considering the fact that you're not six yet. So I'm not going to harp on you too hard here. Letting the lane push to you and playing back. You're missing XP though. You're being silly. You need to be where Lucian's standing, somewhere in here, not back here. You need to leech the XP, you need to get six. You're going to lose your pink ward. Still not six. Yeah, you missed too much XP dancing around. Dancing too far out of XP range. Okay, now you're six. They have level advantage. So you're never gonna win. Actually, Lucian's eight, so maybe. Yeah, maybe. Lucian turned eight in the middle of that, so it was even. Because they, you also had minions, so it works, whatever. Uh, but you guys are dead, you overplay- oh my god, overplay. You're dead. <gasps> the Shen, though. Okay! Lucian is fucked up, though, because he could have got a triple. If he'd played that right. He could have autoed there and got a triple kill. Unlucky. And I think he could have autoed a bit, too, off of the taunt. Nice. So your Lucian's holding it down. Um... Overall, that fight only really works because Jin didn't back up. Pretty sure. Also, your exhaust was pretty good. I think your exhaust actually helped a lot, too. So you get a double ult. Pretty good. Thresh, Thresh exhausted the wrong person. That's one mistake here. And then you do a pretty good exhaust. I like this exhaust. I think it goes through too. I'm pretty sure the exhaust crit, uh, the exhaust blocked the crit, which was nice. And then from there, you know, the rest is history. So, um, overall, I don't like it because of the the numbers advantage and the level advantage. But thankfully, they misplay it pretty hard. And Jin doesn't get any value out of his ultimate. Jin gets no value out of ultimate. Thresh hits a bad exhaust. Uh, you hit a good exhaust. And Lucian seems a lot better than their Jin is. So it, it kind of works its way. It works its way out. Cool. Whatever. You're floating a little too long. I would have just backed. There's nothing that you're going to get done. You need to back and buy items. Still no sight stone. There we go. Um, what are we building? What are we building, Sona? Are we building damage? I don't like this at all. You're not carrying right now. So, I don't like this. I would like something like, I don't know, fucking lucidity boots or a fucking... Uh, a tier 2 side stone, uh, McHale's would be a pretty good option. I don't like where you're going with your build because I don't think it's, uh, very efficient. Because you're barely, and I'm not trying to be a dick to you, you're barely poking. Let's be real. Uh, you're barely doing any damage. Let's be real. So, why are we building damage? Why aren't we building more as utility, uh, since you're playing more of a utility role? And I'm pretty sure, uh, had we had built a little bit more utility, we wouldn't have died. Yet. Pretty good attempt at, uh, at beating this LeBlanc, but unfortunately it just barely doesn't work its way out. But I think, yeah, if we'd built, if we'd built more towards, uh, more health and all that, we would be fine still. Yeah, I'm not, no, I, I don't agree with that, Cuckoo. I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I think that in this game, um, I think that you should be building more towards just being heal and utility right now. 
And then you should get Mikhail's and you should let Lucian carry your ass. Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely think that the, uh, that building towards damage is a mistake given how the slain has played out. You fell behind, you have a Lucian who looks like he knows what he's doing, he's being very decisive, he's going in on kills that are low, he's getting them, he's trying to get in, get out. You need to be supporting that. That shit. This, like, building damage even though you've kind of... Failed to land a lot of poke. I don't like that as much. I think that you could have just been a little bit tankier. A uh, bit more of a heal bot. Lower cooldowns on your ult. And this shit wouldn't be happening to you every fight. I truly believe that. I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying that you uh, can't build damage. Ever. I'm saying that it makes no sense right now. Given what just happened in this game. Yikes, this kid is turding on everyone. And Zach wastes all. This guy is pooping. Pooping on everybody. And like I said, your, your buddy here is doing a decent job. But unfortunately for you... This guy is literally just farming kills and bot lane. And yeah, I, I do believe, I, I do believe overall, uh, this game can be summed up by that. I think that you took, a, you took what I like to call the feeding Sona line. We all take like lines, we all take like, uh, paths. And this happens a lot in solo queue. Um, you, with Sona, I feel like, Sona is the type of champ that once you start failing, you fail harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. Uh, I would encourage you to try to break that trend. I would encourage you to try to break that trend. I think that if we build, if we build more HP, if we build Mikhail's, and if we pick our fights better, even though we're behind with our, we pick good spots to ult. I think we might be able to get something done. But what you're doing is you're building so squishy that everyone's targeting you and you can't even land poke because you're just gonna get poopied on. Wow, you guys are getting murdered. It's literally like I'm watching, it's literally like I'm just watching everyone go to bot lane to feed. It's like they feed. Like let's let's all hit let's hit up the bot lane so we can just so we can give some gold away right quick. That's what everyone's thinking right now. Why are you standing here? Oh, okay, your guy dies before you can ward. Yeah. All right, this game's becoming a fiesta. I'm gonna speed ahead and see if there's anything else to pick up on. I mean, it's this is pretty much a done deal, from what I'm seeing. It's just a matter of them, like, farming you and not taking objectives. They should have tons of objectives taken already, but they're just being really fucking sluggish about it. With how fed they are. You ult just a Thresh. Not a good ult. I would wait for a better ult than that. Yeah. You keep ulting one person. You gotta get the tower down. Okay. Yeah, this game is completely... This is Mario Party shit. The funny thing is, is that the score is pretty close. 
all things considered. And the only reason it's close is because these guys have been just like skirmishing instead of grouping and taking objectives, which happens a lot, low elo. This game would be over uh, with the way that it started the higher up you go. So Shen's going in here. Uh, you were ulting Baron. Um, or I'm sorry, ulting Baron. Warding Baron. You were warding Baron and uh, GP was top. Uh, I don't mind you dropping a ward on Baron, but Dragon was up, and they're pretty much always going to get Dragon first. So, you can drop a, a ward in River, but you can rest assured that Baron's not going to happen yet. I'm not saying that it's impossible for it to happen, but their team is pretty squishy, and the only way Baron ever happens is if you lose complete sight of Fiddlesticks. Uh, and, like, two other members, because he's gonna... Their Baron is really fucking dog shit slow. Thanks for the donation. And now you guys have caught back up. Now, see, here's the thing I don't get. Now, you guys are like ahead. When it shouldn't, it shouldn't even be close. And like, Vagar's huge now somehow. Zach's huge now somehow. And you guys lose this? I'm glad I didn't give up on this gameplay yet, because now I'm curious. I thought the game was like, pretty much just going to be them shitting on you, but evidently, no. Zach engages here, it's a good engage. Oh my god, this is just... Yikes. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't give up on it. So you're helping push top. You have your ult coming up. I would be thinking going into this, I have my ult. It's going to be up in like 0 .0 seconds or whatever it is, right? Uh, let's fucking, let's find a good ult. Let's wait and not get picked off before my ult comes up. Ult can turn this fight. You're very, very fortunate. You're very, 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 very fortunate that, uh, you didn't get picked there. Remember in these situations that your positioning is extremely important. Um, and getting your, getting your team fight ult off as Sona is, in a good way is really important. You have flash right now, so you could definitely get something done here. Now... Two things that I want to say about this, this situation is that you can win a fight by canceling. You can win an entire team fight by canceling this guy out. All right. So when you're coming down, you should be thinking my ult's not up yet. So I kind of want to space back until it is. I really want that ult to be up before I get too close. These guys aren't going anywhere anytime soon. They're tanks. Uh, Vega is in a decent spot positionally. And this guy is clearing the turret so we could definitely in the future you should see that when this fight starts this guy's gonna want it he's gonna want this if he has his ult so as a support uh you can be really cheeky here and you can win this entire team fight just by shutting him down so your ult comes up looks like it comes up a little too late though unfortunately so we don't get that. Uh, but then Fiddle shows up. And you exhaust who? Gangplank? Alright, well, this is just a shitty fight then. Because this is kind of like a damned if you do, damned if you don't, if you don't situation. So I was going to say, you know, think about maybe ulting the shutdown fiddle. And I was going to say, if you can't do that, then position back. Uh, but you kind of get stuck in a weird position. If you came down here, you might have been able to get a nice wombo ult off. Uh, but I'm, I, the only thing that concerns me is that I wasn't entirely sure that you were playing it safe enough without your ult off of cooldown yet. Yikes. Oh, 
Let's skip ahead and see how you guys lose this and see if it's on you. You drop some wards down. I see no problem with that. On Baron is important. Zack engages. Thresh gets hooked. You should know when this when Thresh gets picked off, it's now 4v5 in enemy territory. Or it's 4v4 in enemy territory. But your Lucian, who's doing pretty well, gets picked. So now we're 4v4 enemy territory. We're over minions pretty much. We've got a wave here that isn't that hasn't made it yet. And we're fighting under turret. So you guys are going pretty crazy here. Yeah. You guys went pretty nuts though. I like how you're trying to get out. That's fine. And the throws, the counter throws begin. Shen's like, no, you can't get this. You can't get this. I am too tanky for you. So they chase Shen for a little while. Uh, people are pinging Baron. They're definitely not on it yet. You have... Oh, they wanted the ward. Okay, so you put the ward down. Or someone puts the trinket down. And here's the thing with Sona in general. I can... I can nitpick a lot of things, but Sona as a champ is, like I said at the beginning of this, is very, very one-dimensional. She walks forward, she pokes, or she doesn't. She heals, or she doesn't. She ults, or she doesn't. There's really not a lot under the hood with Sona. Um, the only things that I can really go ham on is your build, because I think that you're building, like, some funky-ass shit. You've got Zerot, you've got fucking Athenes. Um, I'm not sure... If I'm going Athenes very often uh, with Sona support, like ever, maybe, um, sometimes, depending, but I'm definitely not going Z Rock. I would be going Mikhail's. I would get Mikhail's this game. And the reason you get Mikhail's is because you're getting carried, right? We can all agree. We can all agree that we're getting carried right now. You do have good assists, you are helping your team, but your lane phase did not go with that great. And you were behind, you were set behind, you were set back to the Stone Age, and that's okay. That happens to everyone that happened to me just a game ago. Um, it happens. It's whatever. Uh, but it's about building correctly for the situation depending on the champion. So I would say in the future, we should be getting Mikhail's so that we can save our ADC when he gets hooked, like up here. Imagine if when he got hooked, you Mikhail's him right away and he gets out. Imagine if that Zack, when he gets caught, you Mikhail him and he gets out. Like, that is infinitely more valuable than whatever the fuck you're building with the Z-Rod and shit. Uh, Z-Rod is not going to do nearly as much as Mikhail's would in this team. You have a high damage mid, a high damage ADC. Your high damage mid can pretty much solo carry too if you keep him alive. There's so many chances for you... To keep to easily win this game, given your comp, and then if you build Mikhail's. Now you're going bot lane with your goofy Z Rot while your team's gonna 4v5 and they might lose. There it was! There it was! I really wish you could see yourself though because I'm explaining to you how you taking zero going bottom and putting it down here and being away from your team and not building to protect them with Sona I'm telling you right now that you can talk you can talk at length about how and I wish I had twitch chat set up and I will eventually and I'll put it in sub only mode um, I'm not trying to be a dick to you but when I'm explaining, when I'm explaining to you that going Z-Rot and then going bottom is really bad and not building like a Mikhail's and not building to provide utility for these guys and to just ensure that you get carried. Um, 
But I'm explaining to you these things, and then we just see that they go, they fight a 4v5 at Baron because it's low elo, and all you gotta do is keep your low elo morons alive and you win. It's low elo, and you thankfully in low elo you have a comp where it's like free win if you keep them alive. But instead, you build some goofy shit, you go down to bot lane while Baron's up, you put a Z-Rot down, uh, which you should never have, you should never have a Z-Rot at this stage, and then your team gets engaged on by Fiddle, which is completely standard to get engaged on by Fiddle, which is completely, neg you could completely negate it by going Mikhail's. Um, when you do, when you pile all these things together, you quickly realize that it has nothing to do with your team not listening to your calls. It has nothing to do with Vagar building the wrong build. As far as I'm concerned, you built the wrong build. You didn't play the lane right. You were in a goofy spot and had you had just been around for that last team fight, Shen would have been more inclined to rotate because he would have seen you there. Uh, and you could have maybe protected some of your teammates, especially if you had built in the kills. So, there you go. That is why, in my opinion, that is why you lost this game. Because half the fun part, half the fun part about support, at least when you're playing champions like Sona, Janna, Soraka, is just cock blocking people. And it doesn't seem like you're excited about cock blocking. You should be that person that, you should be that, the hot girl's friend that none of the guys like because every time you try to get with the hot girl, the hot girl's fugly ass friend comes over and is like, why are you talking to, what are you doing with him? Why are you talking to him? You want to just leave? You want to just go back to my place and talk about boys and not put out? Like, that's what you should be doing. But you're not doing that. You're doing the opposite of that, which is... Which is like, you're trying to be... Right now, right now, in this game, given the action, you are not the hot girl. You are the ugly girl. You are the ugly girl. You are the ugly girl that thinks she's hot, and nobody likes that. <laughs> Nobody likes that. You know? Nobody wants to see that shit. Alright. <laughs> but yeah. Overall, you need to poke more in lane. You need to itemize more for your team when you're behind. And worry less about what your team's doing. Fuck them, dude. Protect them. If you're gonna play this, if you're gonna play this champion and you fall behind, the only way to bail yourself out is you should be looking for people that are fed and to try to take care of them. That's what it is. All right, I love all you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for the donation. I'm out. Peace. Cracks. If you want your shit, if you want me to do this shit for you, come Twitch.tv/slash Nisi. Donate twenty dollars. I will do this shit.